<laughs> you're okay. I had to... You're okay. I got three kids. Jay's got two kids. We fully understand. <laughs> My dude, son was crying. Dude, at... dude, Dave changed a diaper on live air. Okay, like enough said. And it was Don't perfection. That's hilarious. All right, so you know what? Going into it, man, let's get into the. You're breaking up a little bit, Kenny. Oh, can you hear me? Yep, a little bit better now. All right, sorry. No, you're okay. Um, no, I wanted to go ahead and say to the getting to the ugly part of uh, the discussion. Man, looking at the injury reports for both teams, it looks like oh. it might be the episode of The Walking Dead again. I mean, I, I, good God, I looked at both of ours, even just the people who are out, doubtful, questionable. I'm like. Well, looks like we're going to see a pregame version 2.0 again. Yeah. Well, you know, we haven't... Kenny, you're breaking up again. It's the forefront of the NFL. Dang it. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead and repeat what you just said, brother. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, injuries are definitely at the forefront of the NFL, and I think that, you know, with us, we've... We've been, a, we've been affected a lot uh, by those injuries, And, um, you know, this year, this year, especially, especially losing, losing our number one receiver, um, you know, losing some key players. I think it's, it's frustrating, um, but, you know, it's part of football and it's always next man up, right? Yeah, I mean, it definitely is. I mean, that's the way we're playing it right now, too. Packers, I think the receiving core right now starting out is Alan Lazard, Darius Shepard, Jake Kumaro, and Ryan Grant. That's the four we're rolling out with. Yeah, uh, Packers re-sign, or, uh, signed him, and I like it because of the yeah. fact that he knows he knows uh, uh, Lafleur and McShay and Kyle Shanahan's system. He learned that under Shanahan while he was in Washington, and then he ended up moving around to other teams. I know Oakland was one of them, but uh, yeah, that's why I think we re-signed him because he can pick up the offense quick. And yeah. I always seen flashes from him, Kenny. I never saw a lot of. Uh, I never saw the like the consistent play, but there's flashes, and I'm wondering with him coming in on the offense, maybe it'll help. And that was that was the thing with us is he had a great game against Denver, and then was virtually non effective for the rest for the rest of the remainder of the games. Uh, and you know, John Gruden is very impatient, and so if you're not getting production, he's very quick to move on. Um, I think that you know we've still. We've been having issues at the wide receiver position for the past couple of years now. Uh, we haven't had a true number one since, realistically, since Amari Cooper's second or third year there. Um, and really, when he was, when Cooper was there, Crabtree was still Carr's favorite target. So, you know, we haven't had a real true number one. We haven't had a real solid receiving core in a very long time. So, you know, I think that, you know, moving on from Ryan Grant, obviously benefits you guys hopefully but um you know we've been liking what we've seen from trevor davis i yeah i saw that game in chicago and i was rooting for him and then i saw the fumble on the one yard line and i'm like god dang it's like green bay deja vu again he always makes the really simple fundamental mistakes and man tuck when you're crossing that goal line i get you want to reach for it and break the plane but double cover that sucker and go in especially the bears team the bears and detroit lions always are taught to punch the ball out that's what they've been yeah. taught the past couple of years. And uh, Trevor Davis knows that. He's played in that division twice a year <laughs> against that team. He knows better. And I was like, oh, TD, come on. Like, I was rooting for him. And I was rooting for you guys, obviously, because it's a rival against you. But, right. man, I just – I really wanted him to get the touchdown. It wasn't. I didn't have him in fantasy or nothing. I just have always liked him when I was – as as a Packers fan. Um, so, I mean – I. I think he's going to do better this week because he does know Petten system. He does know the soft zones of it, but Petten might also. Petten's weird like this. He'll always he'll also always switch up, especially if he knows a former player is going against him on offense that's used to be on the team. He will switch up a whole new scheme, and it won't even look the same to to the wide receiver. So, I mean. Yeah. I, like I said, I think it's kind of battle of whichever wide receiving core does better because I know y'all got a good trade in Zay Jones. But after that, I mean, it's Trevor Davis, it's Hunter Renfro, and um, I think Dwayne Harris was uh, questionable, and then Kalen Doss came up, correct? Yeah. Well, you can't forget Darren Waller, man. 
our leader. Well, receiver. I was I was gonna I was gonna get to the tight ends, but yeah, wide. I was just talking about the wide receivers alone. I mean, I mean, both of ours is all banged up, and that but that's where the strength yeah. comes. From. It's the tight ends. Darren Waller. You got Mercedes Lewis, Jimmy Graham. I mean, the, the tight ends are gonna be the kind of the stars of the offense, in my opinion, on this game. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel it's gonna be the tight ends and the running backs. If we, you know, you got to have. You gotta have a strong run game, and that's that's what we did against the Bears. And hopefully, uh, you know, no offense, but hopefully we do it again this, this week. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, you gotta root for your team, man. You're not gonna be like, oh man, I'm facing Green Bay. I can't do that. Yeah, of course you're gonna yeah, root. For. Right. Um, but also too, a biggie that I saw pop up on the injury report this week: Trent Brown, and he's doubtful. Um, yeah. That's a he's a mountain of a man, Kenny. Like I watch him play, he towers over the rest of the O line. <laughs> and I with him out and I, I've checked out y'all's backup. Um I I I hope he's in because if not, Preston and Zadarius Smith are gonna be rushing heavy from that rest of the day. I that's that's all I see. I mean, do you think they're able to get production if Brown is out, or do you think he kind of rehabs to get healthy? I think they'll be able to get production if Brown's out. I think that as long as we go with David Sharp and not not Brandon Parker, we'll be okay. Um, but, you know, obviously we're going to be going – you're probably going to see more of a two-tight set. You're going to see the fullback in more. Um, I would expect to see Ingold get a lot more looks this week, especially because he's going to be playing in front of a home crowd. Um, but I definitely, I definitely think that you're not going to see as many – well, and you don't really see a lot of deep passes from Carr right now because of the defenses that we've been facing. But I think that you're not going to see a lot of deep passes this week. I think you're going to see a lot of short intermediate throws. You're going to see a lot of runs. You're going to see a lot of audibles at the, at the front at the line of scrimmage. Um, and, you know, Carr making those adjustments to, one, protect himself, uh, but, two, to move the ball and protect the football. Yeah, I, I'm expecting a little kind of trickery here and there. I mean, with Gruden, you never really – expect the norm is what I've learned whenever we're playing him. Right. So, I mean, even when he was with us, he'd always do the crazy stuff with Favre, like, and Favre loved it. That's one thing he said he loved about Gruden is he would always teach him stuff, how to hold the ball weird and still get it out. And I mean, even trying to change calls to trick the defense, Gruden taught him all that. So I I don't expect anything normal with Gruden ever. That's just, I, it's the norm not to expect anything normal. And I mean, like I said, Green Bay's hurting on the wide receiver spot. So is Oakland. But the thing is, Josh Jacobs, man, I uh, we've held the rushing offense of Detroit and uh, Dallas down. But, man, um, Josh Jacobs has proven everyone wrong. And a lot of people were hating on him, saying, oh, he shouldn't have been a first-rounder. He uh, should have probably gone in the second. Raiders may have overpicked on him. And he's come out and shut everyone up. He's been a stud this year. Yeah. Now Jacobs is an absolute. Jacobs is an absolute stud. I've been very impressed with what he's done. Uh, he's been playing some great football, and hopefully, it continues. Yeah, I. I mean, the way he runs, he's patient. I mean, he waits for the block to develop, and he's got this physical. He reminds me in a, in a good way, and when his prime years is Mark Ingram. He it's just yeah. the way he runs and he's patient. He's got that burst of physicality. Like, well, he'll sit there and wait, and then three yards before you know, it, he's smacking you in the mouth and he's carrying you for another four. It, it just reminds me of Mark Ingram and the O line that Gruden has built there for him is amazing. A lot of people ripped on Colton Miller, but he's been good for y'all. Colton Miller bulked up. He's you know he's playing some good football. Richie Incognito is an absolute hog. Um, and we got Gabe Jackson back this week, so I'm really excited about that, too. Yeah, I, I saw Gabe Jackson. Do you think he's fully healed, or do you think he's still a little banged up? I think he's fully healed. I mean, he's had he's had a number of weeks to get back in shape, uh, to get that knee feeling good. I think, he's, I think he's finally good to go. Well, all right, I know this isn't um, Packers-Raiders related, but i got to ask one thing. Are you yep. kind of relieved a little bit about Mahomes getting knocked out so that way Raiders can catch up and get a run? Look, I never I never want to see anybody get hurt. Agreed. But, I'm right there with you. Yeah, but the fact that, they, you know, this puts the Chiefs in a position where, you know, right now the AFC West is up for grabs. 
and it puts the Chiefs in a position where they can lose some games potentially. Uh, anything to help us out is is definitely you know definitely worth it. You know, I remember when when Carr went down. You're breaking up, Kenny. These fans were cheering for it, so I mean, sorry, I'd be a liar to say if we weren't a little bit happy. I mean, yeah, it's just like we face Kansas City next week, so that's why I'm like, okay, yes, I was excited for Mahomes versus Rogers, but I will not mind facing the defense we have versus Matt Moore. So, I mean, I look at it like that. Oh, yeah. I don't want anyone hurt, but. Man, the wins are tough these days in the NFL. Teams are getting better day by day. So it's not like, especially with the trade deadline looming, you don't know what's coming. And I have a feeling Mike Mayock is pulling some strings right about now because he knows a lot of people throughout the league. When y'all hired him, I'm like, I'm like, that's a good move. One, he knows the draft, and he has a ton of connections throughout the league. And so does Gruden. Oh, I, yeah. I, like their network is was ridiculous when he hired him because it doubled the size and he already knew a ton of GMs be, and all these little GM assistants because where do you think he was getting all of his sources news from? Of course. And the funny thing is, you know, people people's major knock on Gruden was that he had, he had been out of the league for ten years. But what they didn't realize, what they failed to realize, is that Gruden was sitting in the booth watching film every single day, every every week, week in, week out, meeting with these coaches, getting intel on these teams. So all he was doing was research for the past ten years. So I think that between him and him and Mayock, those two football minds, these guys are going to do a great job. I'm I'm really excited about them. Yeah, and you mentioned Reggie McKenzie earlier, and I I he tried to do well there, but the thing is, him and Gruden. I I mean I know Reggie McKenzie's uh, personality, and I knew Gruden and him weren't going to mesh. No, and Reggie did what we needed him to do. You know, we were in serious cap hell. And Reggie came in and got got us out of a lot of those bad contracts. He brought in some players. He, you know, he was able to get us Khalil Mack. He was able to get us Derek Carr. And granted, uh, you know, the rumor is that John Gruden really told Mark Davis to to draft Derek Carr. It wasn't a Reggie pick, uh, but you know, we were able to get some some key play, some key players on that team. Gabe Jackson. Uh, and but you look at what Reggie's done. Um, you know, the late round picks, the mid round picks, those were a little off and his approach to things was a little more slow and methodical. I don't think that, um, you know, he would have done as well with the picks that we have this year. Um, and I don't think you're going to get a guy like Jonathan Abram or a guy like Josh Jacobs or, you know, a guy like Cleveland Farrell who, you know, obviously the pro football, pro football focus numbers aren't that great, but I think he's a great, a great leader on the team. Uh, and he's going to be more of a Justin Tuck style player. So, but yeah, Gruden, Gruden and Reggie certainly probably didn't mesh well. Um, but Mayock and Gruden do. Oh yeah, I mean Mayock is very down to earth, and I'm. You know what I was glad about? I am so glad that Mayock stood his ground with Antonio Brown. I, I'm oh, so I'm glad sure. as a rookie GM he didn't back down from this diva player. He stood his ground. Gruden backed him, and I was so happy he got out of Oakland because everyone's like wondering why he's bound. Like he's had three locker rooms in two years, and he's destroyed them. Yeah. I mean, not destroyed them, but he's destroyed the locker room while he was in there. Then he left, and the locker rooms were fine. Patriots are winning. Oakland's winning. I mean, Steelers, yeah, they're kind of on the downtrend, but, I mean, they lost Big Ben. They're trying to figure out after Brown and Bell. Um, they're still, they can still win the AFC North. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and down talk them, but, yeah, the Steelers aren't the same Steelers we know, but the other two locker rooms that he was in are winning. So, yeah. Do you think no, I'm, Mayock I'm, knew of this news of all the allegations Antonio Brown has against him right now, and then that's why they just let him go? I think it played into it. Um, I can tell you that, you know, Raiders Twitter knew about it on the Friday before he got released. Uh, there was there was leaks on Twitter about the allegations, um, and so the fact that he was released so quickly, I don't. I think that we they may have known about it. You know, obviously you don't know what anybody knows because they're not going to tell you, but I think they knew about it. I think also Drew Rosenhaus knew about it, and I think the Patriots knew about it too. I think the Patriots were hoping that they could suppress it and it wouldn't come out, and, you know, Antonio Brown would just be able to pay these pay this, these people, and it didn't come out like that. And, you know, you know, now that you look at him and you see where he's at, and unfortunately I don't feel bad for the guy at all. The guy, he pissed away $40 million dollars. 
he, you know, he basically 